morning, kids. It's Nahani from the Aboriginal Ontario Early On Centre. Uh, this morning, I'm going to do a little smudge uh, to start our day. Wow. So I have a little piece of smudge. I'm going to light it with my uh, fire. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to wave it. I'm going to so smudge my eyes, my hair, so my ears, my Actually, nose, and my mouth, yes, and my heart. And yes, I say, Jimmy Gwetch. And I will continue to let the uh, smudge burn. Good morning, kids. It's Nahani from the Aboriginal Ontario Early On Centre. Today, I am going to do an oral traditional story for you. It's called The Magic Pots. A long time ago, a very old woman lived in an Ojibwe village. Besides the wigwam she lived in, she also had a separate bark house where she kept five beautiful pots on a shelf. These pots were magical and weren't supposed to be used for cooking or anything. Instead, the old woman kept them there so the other women of the village could come and look at them and get ideas and go home and make their own pots to use. No one could make pottery without the inspiration of the magic pots and to keep them safe, no one put the old but the old woman was allowed to touch them. One year, everyone went out at the same time to pick berries, and the old woman went along too. In the village, five little girls were left behind to tend to their chores. They quickly gathered firewood, did all their other chores, and then got together to play. Out of curiosity, the girls went to the old woman's bark house where she kept the magic pots so they could get a look at how beautiful they were. But that wasn't enough for them, and they got the pots down off the shelf and took them outside and played with them. Despite the fact that the old woman had forbidden anyone to touch them, as the girls were playing, a wolf appeared. The girls were frightened and got up to run into one of the houses to get away from the wolf. As they ran, one of them fell over the birch bark sheet they used to cover the ground under the pots, and instantly there was a noise like thunder. When the wolf was gone, the girls came out and found that all the pots all had been shattered into tiny pieces. When the old woman returned and found out what happened, she found the five girls and told them uh, what they had done. As soon as they told them, a magic thing happened and the disobedient girls were changed into five black crows which flew away, cawing, caw, caw. Without the magic pots, the woman no longer knew how to make pots pottery and that is why the Ojibwe no longer made pots but the crows live on and in summer you can see them in some tall trees uttering a mo mournful caw caw so there you go I hope you enjoyed that story and see you soon for another traditional oral story Learn and play with First Nations and Native art. Small butterflies, a big moose, eagle, moon, fish, frog, totem pole, wolf, and ravens. A, B, C, animals. We have the bear and the canoe. We have an octopus, a school of salmon 
We have whales, we have a crab, and a clam. We have blue, pink, purple, yellow, green, orange, gray, and red. We have one feather, two feathers, three feathers, and four feathers. How many loons? One, two, three. Find the circle right there. Find the fish right here, right there, right there. Find the eagle right here. Find the other fish right here. And find the sun. People in a canoe. We have the loon, we have a sun, we have an owl, a butterfly, we have bears, and we have moose, and we have two people in a canoe. Who can swim, walk, and fly? The fish, the rock cod can swim, the stingray can swim, the raccoon can walk, the hummingbird can fly, the ladybug can fly, the deer can walk, the squirrel can walk, the beaver can uh, walk and swim. Sting, stingaray can swim and the pe pigeon can walk and fly. The turtles can swim and they can walk. The end. Thank you for joining me in Learn and Play. I have one more. Learn the alphabet. A is for art. B is for beaver. C is for crab. And D is for duck. E is for eagle. And F is for frog. G is for grizzly bear, and H is for hummingbird. I is for insect, and J is for journey. K is for kulus, and L is for ladybug. M is for moose, and N is for new moon. O is for octopus, and P is for peace. Q is for queen bee, and R is for raven. S is for salmon, and T is for totem pole. U is for unity, and V is for violets. W is for whale, and find the missing X, Y, and Z. So X, Y, and Z. The end. Thank you for joining me in three stories this morning. Have a great day and I'll see you soon. Good morning kids, it's Nahani from the Aboriginal Ontario Early On Centre. Today my craft is going to be um, a window catcher. So what you'll need is a container, glue, I'm going to use a stick, I'm going to use this stick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour my glue into my container like this. I'm gonna squish my glue all around so that it, my glue is on the bottom of the container. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some 
food coloring. This is a neon food coloring. I'm going to take out my favorite colors. I like, and what I like is, I like this green. And I like this pink. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour a couple of drops into my container. Like this. One, two. So you can see, I'm gonna get my green. I'm gonna open it up. I'm going to put a couple more drops in. Then I'm gonna take my stick make a design really cool design in my little glue container you can see that and what I'll do is I'll let the glue dry and tomorrow it'll be hard and I'll just pop it out of this container Put a string through it and hang it up on a window. So I hope you enjoyed that activity and please join us again for uh, a next, the next one. Hi boys and girls. Uh, honey is gonna do a sensory uh, activity with you this morning. What you'll need is corn starch and water. And if you have that food coloring, uh, you can also color it with your favorite color. You get a tray and you put your color. And if you notice, it's hard, but then I touch it and it turns into liquid. I think it's a cool sensory activity. Um, kids will love it. Uh, so this will turn into liquid. Hi boys and girls, it's Nani from the Aboriginal Ontario Early On Centre. My second activity this morning is cornstarch and water. I've got a tray, you can use any tray, plate, anything you want. I got an open container instead of the other one. So this is cornstarch. You're gonna put it on a plate or a, a flat uh, tray. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna add water. So I don't know if you can see, but this is cornstarch and water. And what it does, this is it's a sensory activity. What I'm gonna do is pour a little bit more cornstarch.
no, 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 no. If you could see, but this is cornstarch and water. So I'm just going to add a little bit of more cornstarch. The cool thing about this cornstarch is that it's hard. But and it turns into a liquid. Do that. You can add food coloring to it. You can play with it. You can, um, what I'll do is I'll add some food coloring to show you. So it's hard on the cookie sheet. And then when I lift it up, you're going to get liquid. See that? And all that is is cornstarch and water. I hope you enjoy this activity and have a wonderful day and we'll see you soon. Good morning kids. It's Nahani from the Aboriginal Ontario Early On Centre. Today's craft is going to be a rattle. A rattle looks like this. And sometimes we don't have these instruments at home. So I was thinking of doing a turtle rattle with you this morning. This is my turtle template. It's very easy. If you don't have one, just make a circle with your arms and your legs, your tail, and your head. So I'm gonna cut these this turtle out and uh, we'll go from there. Hi kids, so I cut out my uh, turtle and it looks like that. So what I can do is I can go ahead and color it. Um, <clears throat> I have my pencil crayon, you can use marker or you can use crayon. So it's up to you how you want to uh, make your turtle. What we'll need after we do our coloring of our turtle is we'll need a paper plate with rice or some seeds. Um, and I'll show you uh, what we'll do from there. Hi kids, I'm back uh, with my completed turtle. Um, so there it is. And you can do whatever you like. But the reason you see all these marks on the back of the turtle is uh, in the middle is the 13 moons uh, January February March April May June July August September October November and two December's on the outside is 28 and that represents 28 days so what I did was I took a paper plate I cut uh, the middle and it gave me the round circle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some corn in on my uh, paper plate circle. I'm going to attach my turtle. And if you have glue, that's great. You could just glue it or I'm going to use a staple uh, to make it quicker because the glue has to dry. But uh, the reason why I'm using a staple is because I want to show you 
the end product. So at the end, you'll have a turtle rattle. You can use it as a hand rattle, or you could put a stick, glue a stick, and you will have a stick turtle rattle. All you have to do is glue uh, the stick and then you can use it as a shaker. Put rice, uh, seeds, uh, corn in your shaker. So there you have it. Really cool uh, turtle rattle shaker. I hope you enjoyed the activity and come back real soon for another one very shortly. Take care. Bon appétit. Good morning, kids. It's Nahani from the Aboriginal Ontario Early On Center. Um, I'm going to do a little quick uh, ABCs of reading with children. So A is for alphabet. It helps your children learn the sounds and the names of the letter. B is for books, 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 lots of varieties. Uh, picture books, poetry, nonfiction, hard books, soft books, lots of variety of books. And you need a comfortable space, which is C, to read. D is dramatic play, act out your stories together. E is for everyone everywhere and f is for fun g is for grocery shopping look for labels together h is for help connect what happens in the stores to your children's life i is include all family members j is for jump let your children be active while you read a story and k is for kitchen Read recipes while uh, talking, cooking, and baking together. L is for libraries. Get a card for each child and let them choose their own books. M is for model. Model. Let children see you read and write. N is for no TV screens under two years of age. Limit screen time for older children and choose educational shows and watch them together so you can talk about them afterwards. O is try only looking at the pictures for a change and make up a story together. Look for words. Uh, look for wordless books from the library. P is point out printed letters everywhere. Q is quiet reading. If your child loses interest, try again later or another time. R is for rhyming. Play rhyming games. Rhymes become, rhymes become readers. S, sounds and singing. Sing lots of songs and rhymes. T, talk to your children in your first language and let them talk. U, Children understand stories better when you take the time to answer their questions and don't just rush through the story. V, vocabulary. Children who know lots of words are better readers. Help them learn the meaning of lots of words. W, give children lots of opportunities to experiment. X, X, exit point out signs all around, like the stop sign, the elevator, pull on the TTC if you're uh, not well. So look for signs. And why yesterday? Today, tomorrow, talk about the past and the future events. Z, make reading together part of a bedtime routine. So there's the 26 uh, letters of the alphabet um, to help your children read. I hope you enjoy that.
morning kids, it's Nahani from the Aboriginal Ontario Early On Centre. Today's book is called Cradle Me. Smiling, frowning, peeking and touching, crying, and yawning, thinking and looking, sleepy and sleeping, generations of Native American mothers have carried their babies in cradles boards and they are still used by many tribes today. Each cradle board is personalized and uh, vary from tribe to tribe. The babies are kept secure and comfortable and close to their mothers. Before the cradle board is used, it is blessed with prayers and songs and good thoughts. I see Jimmy Gwich for this beautiful cradle book. The next book that I'd like to read is Learning the Colors with the Northwest Coast Native Art. Red, blue, yellow, and green. Purple and gray. Brown and pink. orange and white. Can you find the different colors you have learned? Red, orange, yellow, green, gray, blue, and purple. And I say Jimmy Gwich for this learning the colors. The next book I'd like to read is Learn and Play with First Nations and Native Art. So this is a small butterflies and a big moose. We got eagles, moon, fish, frogs, totem poles, ravens, and wolves. ABC, animals, bear, and canoe. We have an octopus, a school of salmon, whales, clam, and crab. We have yellow, blue, pink, and purple. Orange, green, gray, and red. One, bejik, two, niche, three, nibin, four, newas, how many loons? Find the circle, the fish, the eagle, the moon. Good morning, kids. It's Nahani from the Aboriginal Ontario Early On uh, Center. Uh, today's story is called how the Indians got maple sugar. One day, Windabajo was standing under a maple tree. Suddenly, it began to rain. Maple syrup, not sap, right on top of him. Wimbinajo got a birch bark tray and held it out to catch the syrup. He said to himself, this is too easy for the Indians to have syrup just rain drop like this. So he threw the syrup away and decided that before they could have the syrup, the Indians would have to give a feast, offer tobacco, speak to the Mindano, Mindano and put out some birch bark trays. Nukamis, the grandmother of Windbajo, 
showed him how to insert a small piece of wood into each maple tree so the sap could run down into the vessels beneath. When, when Men Abush tested it, it was thick and sweet. He told his grandmother he would never do, never do to give the Indians a syrup without making them work for it. He climbed to the top of one of the maples, scattered rain over all the trees, dissolving the sugar as it flowed into the birch bark vessels. Now the Indians have to cut wood, make vessels, collect the sap and boil it for a long time. If they wanted that maple syrup, they have to work for it. And that is how the natives, Indians, got their maple sugar. Good morning kids, it's Nahani from the Aboriginal Ontario Early On Centre. Today what I'd like to do is make a tobacco tie with you. So what you'll need is a piece of uh, cotton fabric. I have this purple one. What you could do to make the tie is cut a little slit on the top and just pull. And there's your tie. So you got your fabric, put it in your hand. Take your tobacco, put it in the middle. Close it up like that. Grab your tie. Tie it in a knot. There you have it, a nice tobacco tie. You can put it in your pouch, you can gift it, or you can carry it on your hand like this. Or you can uh, put your tobacco tie under a tree and say a little prayer. Have a great day and I hope you enjoy making a tobacco. Good morning kids, it's Nahani. I'm going to sing a song with you this morning. I have my drum, I have a drumstick. You can also use rattles, uh, your voice, uh, your hands, and sing along with me. It's called the Native Love Song, and it goes like this, it's four beats. Me ta 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 on a shoni Yogi a we te hey Yogi a we te hey Yogi a we te hey We'll do it three more times Me ta 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 on a shoni Yongi a we te hey Yongi a we te hey Yongi a we te hey Let's do it the second time Mi ta 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 On a shoni Yogi a we te hey Yogi a we te hey this is the last time. Me ta 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 on a shoni yogi a we te yogi a we te yogi a we te. Now we're going to the second one, and we're only going to do it twice. Me ta 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 on a shoni Yogi a we te Yogi a we te Yogi a we te Now we're gonna pick it up a little bit 
Jimmy Gwedge for this beautiful native love song. I hope you were able to use your rattle, use your shaker, use your drum, or even use your hands. So thanks for joining me and uh, come back soon for another song with Nahani from the Aboriginal early on. Good morning kids, it's Nahani from the Aboriginal Ontario Early On Centre. How do you learn? How do you think our children learn? Our children learn and develop by touching. So 
um, we did a craft this morning and a lot of touching went into the craft. Um, so it's hard right now. And what you would do is you would pick it up and it becomes liquid. So our kids learn by touching. They learn by hearing, hearing the drum, hearing the rattle, hearing the elders speak, hearing the stories. Children learn by tasting. So sometimes uh, a lemon will taste sour, a pickle will uh, taste uh, spicy uh, with garlic sometimes. Um, an apple will taste sweet, peach will be juicy. So taste is learning. Seeing, when our kids see things, smelling, when our children smell the sage, the sweet grass, the tobacco, the cedar, the, um, the birch bark. So smelling, they can smell the pines, the pine cone, the leaves even smell. Moving. So when our children are moving and doing and playing, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven ways our children learn. I hope you enjoyed that. Talking to your baby in your own language. Talk to your baby in your own language about what you're doing together when you're bathing or you're feeding your baby or you're changing or napping. Uh, have fun with rhymes, poems, and songs in your own language. Tell your child stories in your language. Encourage him or her to join in with the storytelling. Try to find books written in your language for your child or try making your own. Encourage your children to play with children who speak the same language as she or he does. Don't laugh or tease your child because of their accent or making mistakes. Talk to your child about what she did at playgroup, nursery, in your language. If she uses English words, repeat what she said using your language. Do not correct him or her. Make her use her language, her or his language. Help your child feel proud of their language. If he or she speaks more than one language, teach him or her the names of the language. Talking tips. Talk to your child when you're playing together. Have fun with nursery rhymes and songs. Encourage your children to listen to different sounds like cars and animals. This will help your child, child's listening skills. Gain your child's attention when you wanna talk. Increase your vocabulary by giving choices. Do you want juice or milk? Talk about things as they happen when you're both unpacking the shopping, listening carefully and giving your child time to finish talking. Take turns to speak. If your child says something incorrect, say it back the right way. Yes, the dog bit it, didn't he? Try and have special time with your child each day to play with toys and picture books. Limit TV time. Try to watch TV together so that you can talk about what happened. So I hope all these tips help um, you when you're talking to your baby or talking to an uh, infant or toddler. I hope uh, you have a great day and uh, come back soon for some more literacy Thank information. Um, recently, I just uh, 
been gifted another grandchild and uh, um, talking to uh, my baby grandchild is uh, a way to get to know each other and it's a good start to their life. Babies, just a few minutes old, if content and alert, will seek out faces and look at them intently. Try slowly opening your mouth or sticking out your tongue. Your baby may copy you. So what I did uh, this weekend is I stuck out my tongue when I looked at my granddaughter, Gia. And I put it back in, stuck it out and in. I waited for her uh, to see and she eventually copied me. And she's only four months old. So you can do this too. As soon as your baby is born, she can recognize and turn to the sound of your voice. From birth, your baby is listening. So keep talking. Babies are born with a wide range of emotions. From birth, their faces will light up with pleasure and your baby's facial muscles will soon develop, enabling a full-blown smile. And that's what my granddaughter did this, this weekend. She smiled at uh, Nokomis, her grandma. When your, new, your newborn is in the mood to chat, he or she might move their mouth as if they're talking. Answer your baby by saying something like, what's a good story you're telling me today? As the weeks go by, your baby will look at you for longer and make little cooing sounds. Have a conversation by copying her or him sounds. Games are a great way to talk to talk together. You don't need any toys, you just need each other. Count your baby's toes or your baby's fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sing to your baby, even if you don't think you sound great. Your baby will love hearing your voice, and any song will do. Like adults, babies don't always feel like being social, especially if they're hungry, tired, uncomfortable. So respect your baby's need to take a time out. What you'll need for that is some tobacco. If you have some cedar, some white buffalo sage, and the sweet grass. We don't have, but we'll use all three. So what I'll do is I'll light my smudge my fire, put it in my smudge bowl. So now I'm going to take my feather, or you can use your hands. I'm just going to clean my hair. Going to smudge my eyes so that I see good things. Smudge my nose so I smell good things, smudge my ears so I hear good things, I'm gonna smudge my mouth so I eat and say good things. Well, not. Lastly, I'm going to smudge my heart. And I say Jimmy Gwetch to the creator for this medicine. I hope you enjoyed our smudge this morning and have a great day.